In this video, I'm going to show you how to take an ordinary switch on a wall and add an outlet either directly below it or off to the side a little bit. It's a very easy job that you can do yourself at home and save yourself a little bit of money. Okay, so without further ado, let's dive right in. Okay, so as you can see here, I've already taken the switch cover off. Now, the very first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you have a constant source of power to your switch and your switch doesn't have a switch loop configuration. If you don't know what a switch loop is, you can Google that and easily figure it out. One of the easiest ways to tell if you have a switch loop or not is to shine a light in the box. And if you only see one set of wires coming in the box, and if you look at your side terminals on your switch and you see a white and a black wire on your switch, then you're probably in a switch loop and this really isn't going to work for you. So this switch has two black wires on the sides of the switch, which is right. That's normal. So we can move on from here. Now from here, you're going to want to cut your power off. Let's go ahead and remove the switch out of here. Okay, so momentarily turn the power back on for this next step so you can determine which wire is the hot wire. If you have one of these kind of uh, contactless voltage sensors, these work very well. Okay, so it's not this one. All right, so that bottom one is our hot wire. So now cut the power back off. All right, so now that we know it's our bottom wire, let's go ahead and pull out our neutral and disconnect the bottom wire from our switch. So you might be tempted, because we're adding another wire to the box, Say, so, oh, well, it's easy just to use these backstab terminals right here to push your new wire in there. And, oh, great, that was fast and easy. It's done. Well, yeah, these things are not that great. Over time, they can come loose. They can cause a high-resistance connection. Or you might be tempted to do this, is say that this, you know, was back on here. You might be tempted to do the same thing and just put another one in there right on top of it, like that, and tighten up the screw. Well, here's a live shot of one that I actually found that was like this, and it was causing some problems because over, over time it came loose. These aren't designed to do that. So don't, don't do it that way. Take this off. And we're going to make a pigtail. If you're finding any value in this video, please subscribe to this channel. I come out with videos like this as often as I can. But before we worry about that, let's go ahead and establish our new plug location. We know we've got constant power in the box there, so we're golden. Now, what I like to do is I like to go around the room and measure the other plugs to see what the height of those plugs is. 18, 20 inches or whatever to the bottom, to the top, it doesn't matter. As long as you're consistent with what the rest of the plugs are, that way your new plug doesn't look out of place. Next is I would determine which side of the switch your 2x4 is on. Obviously we can see this one, but a little trick that I use is I'll stick a screwdriver in there and kind of pull that back and you can see, okay, that side is open. Pull this side back and okay, we got a 2x4 right there. So that's that's one trick that I like to use. Of course, a stud finder is another trick that will determine that for sure. All right, so I usually like to just use a level. It's easy. It's accurate. You know that this is resting up against the 2x4, or at least it usually is. So right about there. And that establishes our left side of the plug there. Now, I usually like to use a box like this. It's called a smart box. It's very easy. It's already got the screws pre-installed inside the box. The other option, these are called old work boxes, by the way, is this classic one with the wings behind, and those open up and they squeeze behind the drywall, and that holds the box in. Now, these work very well if there's not a stud right next to the hole, like if you're in between the studs, then you have no choice but to use this type of box. Then what I like to do is go ahead and put the one side of the box up against your line. Now remember, you want to do it at the height of the rest of the plugs in the room. And just go ahead and trace around. Now I want to say a couple of words here before we move on here. A lot of times a switch is going to be right next to a doorway, you know, real close to the door casing. 
And maybe you don't want your outlet right there, right next to the door. You want to move it over somewhat. Now, it's very uh, easy to do that. I did a video on this a while back that I'll link below. Uh, basically, all you have to do is remove the base trim from the bottom, and that base trim should come up above your bottom plate right here, and then you can drill a hole through your stud, and when you remove the base trim, you can cut below where the base trim was exposed at, and you'll have a little channel in there where you can run the wire over to the next stud bay, but we're going to move on with this one right below the switch. Okay, so if you don't have an oscillating tool like this, the basic alternative is this type of saw, which works just fine. Now, when you're cutting out any kind of a hole like this, you want to take pretty shallow strokes like that. You don't want to go like this because you just don't know what's behind there. There could be wires running across here, and if there is, there's going to be a whole lot of sadness because you just put a hole there. But you get the idea. Just try not to damage something that could be lurking behind the wall. Just like that. And let's test fit our new box. Now before you screw that box in, you'll want to get your wire established. So before we can install our new wire, your box will probably have these tabs closed off like this one here is on the left. The one on the right is open already. But the solution is very simple. Just take a screwdriver and put it on the tab and then tap it with your hand to push that open. And then that's all you really got to do. Next, you'll want to make sure of what type of wire you have in your box. If you're running on a 15 amp breaker, then you should have 14 gauge wire. If you're on a 20 amp breaker, you should have 12 gauge wire and you want to make sure to put 12 gauge wire back to your new plug. We're using 14 gauge wire on this one. Just feed it down. Sometimes you'll have to put your hand in the hole and kind of search around in there. Well, we got it right here. Next, you'll want to go ahead and open up one of your access holes and feed some wire through it. Now, you'll want to make sure that your wire is not too short. I usually like to leave about 8 inches from the back of the box. I stick my pliers in there, my wire strippers, and that's about the right length, and that's an easy way to gauge it. So, we're good here. Let's just screw that box in. Just hold the box as flush as you can with the drywall and screw it in. While we're here, let's go ahead and get this plug put in. Just strip that back like a banana peel. And I like to cut the jacket off, leaving about half an inch or so inside the box. Now, if you didn't know, plugs and switches have on the back what's called a strip gauge. This is a guideline of how far back you should strip the wires. Right there. That's all that's for. And we'll go ahead and strip this other one. And I do like to bend these into a loop instead of doing the backstabbing, as I was explaining earlier. All right, just like any other plug, hot goes on the brass on the right. Neutral goes on the silver screws on the left, and then, of course, the ground is on the green screw. And we'll fold up our wires nice and neatly and stuff it in the box. We'll put our cover on, and then that part is ready to go. Okay, so I've already peeled back my new wire so that it'll save a little bit of time. And I've also disconnected the ground from the switch. Now this wire that's left is just going to the light. There's no need to disconnect that one. So the first thing I usually like to do is go ahead and connect my neutrals. That way I can just stuff them in the back and get them out of the way. Very good. Get that out of the way. 
Now next, this is our hot wire that was on the switch before, and this is our new hot wire. So these two are going to go together to make a pigtail. Just straighten out the loop and add in your pigtail. Now I would make it a little longer than it needs to be, probably a foot long. And then after we do what we need to do with it, we'll cut it off later. Let's put a wire nut on this one. And I'm going to hold off on pushing this one in the back just for now until I get the grounds done. Now most of the time on the grounds, you'll see a copper crimp ring on there. And if you have that, you'll probably need to get that off of there. You can bend it and twist it. It's just copper. It'll break off. And then you can replace it with one of these green wire nuts if you don't have a crimp tool. All right, so let's just twist our new ground back here in the back. I'm sorry if you can't see this very well. It's kind of up inside. And then we'll cut that off equal to the other ground that's on in there, leaving one long one for our switch. Put the wire nut back. I know you can't see in there, but all I'm doing is tightening the wire nut. All right, so it's tight. Now we can push our pigtail back down in there. And we'll go ahead and cut this off so that it's equal with the other one. Bend it into a loop and connect it to our switch. By the way, if I didn't mention it earlier, when you're doing the loops on any connection, make sure the loop is going in the direction that the screw tightens. Because otherwise, when you tighten the screw, it'll loosen the loop. And we are ready to go. Turn the power back on and let's give it a test. Oh yeah. The two on the right are lit up. That is how it's supposed to be. And this will be on regardless if the switch is on or off. And let's test the light, make sure it still works. Works perfectly. All right, so I hope this video has been helpful. Thanks for watching.